Hey, good morning, everybody. It's that time of week. We call it Coffee with PC. That's because I always bring my cup of coffee in to spend a few minutes with you here on Wednesday morning. Uh, I like to answer what I'm drinking, whether it's important to you or not. Um, today, I'm drinking Cassie Cielo. It's a, it's a seasonal Starbucks roast. It only comes out a few weeks a year, a month or two, maybe a year. Uh, I saw it when I was by there the other day, and it's not a dark roast. I'm sure that's surprising to you. Uh, but it's a Guatemalan coffee. I have an affinity. I talked about that before for Guatemala and their coffee because having traveled there on a mission trip and it, even though it's not a dark roast, it's a really nice cup of coffee. So I am enjoying it while it's kind of here for this limited time during the year. I hope you've got your cup of coffee or whatever it is this morning that's getting you going. Uh, listen, today I'm going to make a shameless plug. Uh, call it a commercial more than anything else. That's because I'm kind of excited about something. Got to give Denise credit. This is her idea, something she encouraged me to do some time back. Um, it came out of some discussions we were having about, you know, I kind of had this idea in my mind in the past that that I would like to be maybe a, a, a teacher, college type teacher, a ministry school, Bible college or seminary, of course, don't have the degree, never followed through um, to get my PhD, maybe regret that a little bit, but that's the proverbial water under the bridge. And I guess I can maybe one day go back and work on that, but haven't done that. Anyway, she encouraged me since that was my kind of desire and had that in the back of my head to, to spend some time here in our church using that sort of approach. And, and as I thought about it, um, I decided through discussions with her and, and the like to next week begin a new Wednesday night study. We, we're finishing tonight the book of Matthew. We've gone verse by verse through the gospel according to Matthew. It's been a wonderful study. Um, I have really enjoyed it. I don't know if anybody that comes on Wednesday night has enjoyed it half as much or gotten half as much out of it as I have, but I have loved digging into the gospel of Matthew, the life of Jesus, the story that Matthew tells of who Jesus is and what he did. Um, and as we're finishing that up, on the heels of that, we're gonna go and spend the next period of time, and it's gonna be an extended period of time, on Wednesday nights at six o'clock, going through uh, what would be basically an overview of the Old Testament. If we were in college, you'd probably call it Old Testament survey. That's the class I took um, on a couple of different occasions where, where you just take kind of the big picture look at the Old Testament. Now, we'll spend a lot of time looking at individual books uh, in, a, in a cursory fashion. We're not gonna spend like we did with the book of Matthew, months and months going through it verse by verse, but we'll talk about the individual books and how they fit into the overarching story and theme of the New Testament. One reason, and I've said this a couple of times lately, but I wanna reiterate it. And by the way, I, I got this from a, I believe he was a professor that I follow on Twitter and I really like this and it stuck with me and it's what my hope is in this class. Again, shameless plug, next Wednesday starting at six o'clock over the next several months we're going to be doing this class. This is one of the reasons is he says this, the number one tool we have as Christians apart from the gift of the Holy Spirit in our life to understand the life and ministry of Jesus is the Old Testament. Uh, I think from my studies, that's true. I spent a lot of time in seminary studying the Old Testament. Um, uh, Hebrew, uh, the Hebrew language, one of my favorite studies in seminary was that. And then how the culture of the Old Testament and the literature of the Old Testament and the history of the Old Testament brings so much light on who Jesus is and what he accomplished for us by his life, death, and resurrection. And so it seems like a worthwhile study, especially on the heels of going through the, the, the account of Matthew of his life, to spend some time in the Old Testament. Uh, let, let me give you a couple of biblical reasons, and you could say I'm kind of spoiling maybe a little bit of the week one that we'll do. Why? do I say that? Why do I say the Old Testament is so important for understanding the life and ministry of Jesus? Well, a couple of reasons. 
And uh, incidentally, these are from the lips of Jesus himself. Uh, one account is not in the Gospel of Matthew. You might be surprised. In the Gospel of Luke is we're at the end of the Gospels. Each of the four Gospels talk about the resurrection of Jesus. And the Gospel of Luke records in Luke chapter 24 a couple of places where Jesus himself shows the value of the Old Testament and understanding who he was. One, or who he is, I should say, one is in his interaction with the disciples on the road to Emmaus. Uh, you may be familiar with that post-resurrection story. Um, these disciples are there. Jesus is risen. He appears to them. They don't recognize him, but they uh, walk with him for a while on the road to Emmaus. They're actually surprised by him because he, he doesn't seem to understand all of the turmoil that they're talking about that had happened in and around Jerusalem, specifically his uh, entry and crucifixion and death and the resurrection that, that was beginning to circulate. Obviously, that stirred up the city. And so as they're walking, Jesus goes with them. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 27, he says, this is, this is how Luke said, actually, let me back up to 25. Jesus says to them, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And then verse 27, and beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning him. Now, whenever you see scriptures in the New Testament, that means most of the time, the Old Testament. There's the exception of maybe one or two verses in Peter that refers to Paul as scripture. But, but here, the, the scriptures that Jesus is showing them how it concerns him is the Old Testament. This is what was the Bible, as it were, of Jesus when he was on earth. And it's what he used in this encounter with these people on the road to Emmaus to explain. It told them what was coming. A little bit later in Luke chapter 24, after uh, he has made himself known to these disciples, it says their eyes were opened and they recognized he was the Messiah. A little bit later, he's with his own disciples. He's with that group that were closest to him. And, and as he's appearing to them, and as there's still some, I don't want to say doubt, but that might be the best word. Certainly they're awestruck by his appearance. They had seen him die. Now he's alive. Um, he, he says to them after he eats to prove he's, he's like really, really there. He eats something to prove it. Luke 24, verse 44, he says to his disciples, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Those are all Old Testament references. Jesus on these two occasions after his resurrection says to the people, who he interacts with, hey, listen, you should know better. All of this stuff was told. In fact, one of the things we learned in the Gospel of Matthew as we went through that was Jesus on several occasions actually told his disciples in pretty straightforward terms, hey, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. The Son of Man is going to be handed over. He's going to be he's going to be tortured and crucified and he'll I'll rise again on the third day. And they never seem to believe that was going to happen. And here after the fact, what's he saying? You should have known this because what does he say? The law of Moses, the prophets, the Psalms, kind of that big picture view of the Old Testament. Uh, back to the book of Matthew, another kind of scripture that, that sort of is the foundation for what we'll do in this Wednesday night class over the next several months has to do with Jesus's comment in the Sermon on the Mount, where he says in Matthew 5, 17, that he did not come to abolish the things that they knew, the law and the prophets. In fact, let me just turn over there real quick and read it. I want to get the wording right. That's kind of important. Matthew 5, 17. Jesus says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. What's that? The Old Testament. Rather, I, I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. We see that early in his ministry at the Sermon on the Mount. And then we saw these interactions at the end of his ministry after his resurrection, where he says, listen, this is all in there. So that's why I would say the Old Testament is so important for us to understand 
who Jesus is and what he did. So we're going to spend some time. I'm gonna invite you, if you are able, to join us for that class. It starts next Wednesday, which is September uh, 22nd. September 22nd, six o'clock. We're gonna meet in person in the fellowship hall here in the backside of the fellowship hall at our church. Um, we usually make our Wednesday night services available online, uh, usually through Zoom. So if, if your desire is to uh, be a part of that, you can't be there in person, but you'd like to join us through Zoom, uh, I'll, I'll put a link with this video and, and you can let me know and I'll put you on the reminder to send you the Zoom information so you can join us online for this Wednesday night study. Um, I've been asked to record it. Uh, so I'll probably try to do that. I might, if we're doing it on Zoom, I might use the Zoom record option. I don't know that I'll post it necessarily like online every week, but it could be available if, if you can't watch it um, or be a part of it in person or online to, to see later, uh, just kind of to have that. So, so again, I, I know this is a shameless plug. I admit it. I'm excited about this opportunity to study in this fashion, the Old Testament. You know, I say survey, but but I, I hope that out of this, the goal will be, yes, a better understanding of the Old Testament. But we're also going to hit themes like how should you or how can you study the Bible? What are some practical ways when you open scripture to read it, you can understand it better? Hopefully that will be an outcome, not just, you know, it's not just like a, an academic class, although there will be um, that aspect to it. There'll be information that is exchanged. But like we talked about last week in Coffee with PC, the goal of this class isn't just to get some information, just not for you to hear things, but to hopefully hear things that will put into practice to help us have a better understanding of who Jesus is, what he did for us, and how then we can live out our faith in him. So, so there you go. There it is. Commercial is about over. Love to have you join us. Uh, love to have you in person. Love to have you join us on Zoom, online, or uh, maybe if you need the recording afterwards, I'll try to make that available in some form or fashion. That's my encouragement today. Um, probably more self-serving encouragement, I'll admit it, but I hope in the long term, all of us who go through this process together will learn from each other and will have a better understanding and a fuller appreciation a, of, of, of all of the Bible. I think as Christians, we, we, we say, let's talk just about the red letters. There's that emphasis. There's actually a song by David Crowder about the red letters. And, and those are the words of Jesus. Yes, I get it. They're vitally important. But those red letters are informed by all the black letters that are in scripture, starting at Genesis chapter one, verse one. And so we're gonna spend some time giving some background and, and some understanding, hopefully, to who Jesus is and what he does. So there you go, that's it. I'm gonna stop talking now. I need to go and, and get about the rest of my day. I hope you have a great Wednesday. Of course, we'll be in worship on Sunday. Uh, nine o'clock is our service. We'll have it streamed online or we'll be here in person. And then next Wednesday is when we start this class. So hope you'll have a great day. Hope to connect with you, to see you, to have you be a part of our, our church family through worship or through study together. Have a great day and we'll touch base uh, Sunday or next Wednesday. Thanks so much.